Introduction. I'm Takumi Hamasaki from Keio University, Japan. This is a joint work with Yuta Ito. Today, I talk about our bifocal occlusion method for optical see-through head-mounted displays using a slide occlusion mask. These days, optical see-through head-mounted display have become widespread. The devices maintain the realism of the virtual contents against the real world. However, most see-through HMDs have a problem that the devices can only add thin light, add, on, add light on thin light, but cannot block incoming thin light. As a result, users perceive that semi-transparent virtual objects uh, are mixed in the real world, and it degrades the realism of see-through augmented reality. A method to solve this problem is to, to add occlusion support into see-through HMDs in order to block incoming scene light. This occlusion makes virtual contents opaque and improves the realism of see-through AR. So how do we occlude the incoming light? To block incoming light where virtual contents are displayed, we need to block light spatially. There are devices that can do it. They are spatial light modulators, or SLMs, which can selectively control incoming light. Integrating C these SLMs into see-through HMDs and establish methodology for occlusion support. And such systems have been already proposed. Some, some researchers install an SLM in front of eyes as a simple occlusion approach. Maimon et al. proposed pin light display which is a wide field of view OST HMD. This device also supports occlusion with a transparent LCD in front of eyes. However, in such a simple occlusion approach, an occlusion mask becomes blurred. This is why the depth of the SLM does not match the depth of the fixation point, leading to accommodation conflict. To avoid the dark occlusion problem, a common occlusion approach places an SLM between a pair of lenses. This approach makes the resulting occlusion masks appear sharp because each pixel of the SLM exclusively blocks light rays from the point light sources. Let's review systems with the approach. Kyoka et al. proposed a typical occlusion method using a transmissive LCD and several optics. In the system, scene light is occluded selectively. This is the result of the system. You can see that the occlusion is sharp. I review other occlusion approaches with an SLM. Yamaguchi et al. proposed a method using an LCD and micro lenses. Gao et al. proposed a method using an ELCOS and freeform optics. Uchida et al. proposed a method using a DMD to achieve a bright real world. However, most Existing occlusion capable OST HMDs can only display occlusion masks at a single and fixed depth. If a virtual image places on the occlusion mask plane, a user will see a sharp occlusion mask behind the sharp virtual image. On the contrary, if a virtual image places on other planes, 
a user will see a blood occlusion mask behind their sharp virtual image or a vice versa. This drawback of static occlusion masks is not an issue in most conventional occlusion capable OST HMDs as the depth of the occlusion mask is designed to align with that of the virtual display. The alignment assumption is, however, challenged by recent advances in bifocal OST HMDs. Bifocal OST HMDs can render virtual images at several different or even continuous depths. Thus, a fixed focal plane may cause another ac accommodation conflict with bifocal virtual image to be occluded, leading to un uncomfortable user experiences as a user cannot focus on both images simultaneously. To address this issue, we propose a bifocal occlusion technique for an OST HMD system. This method optically moves the depth of the occlusion mask to that of the virtual image. We physically slide an SLM along the optical axis to optically adjust the occlusion mask layer so that the mask appears sharp and aligns with the virtual image at any given depth. Furthermore, our system is able to form visually consistent occlusion. In other words, when user loses focus on the corresponding virtual image, the mask gets blurred consistently as a virtual image does. This is a schematic diagram of our system. Our system consists of lenses and an LCD. The lenses, lenses arranged at their distances keep users' field of view between behind and in front of the system. We need to decide the, the LCD position corresponding to the depth of the virtual image plane. The LCD position is obtained by this equality from the lens formula. This is our hardware setup for evaluations. Our hardware setup, our setup consists of optical components, an LCD, and an electric linear stage. We integrate our laser projector and a beam splitter with the system for a retina projection display. We use our user perspective camera to capture images from the viewpoint of a user. This is a schematic diagram of our prototype. We used eight lenses instead of the three lenses in the schematic diagram of our method. Because we could not find lenses with a shorter focal length than these lenses. However, two optical systems are considered optically almost identical. We verify that each calculated position for the LCD creates an occlusion plane at the tar target depth from the viewpoint. We compare the theoretical LCD positions described before with the observed LCD positions that actually form sharp occlusion masks for each target depth from the viewpoint. This figure shows the relationship between the LCD position and the distance from the virtual viewpoint to the fixation plane. We approximated the observed values from actual LCD positions at several fixation plane depths. <laughs> we 
We also verified overall appearance of images with our occlusion method and the retina projection display at the three depths. Let's check these images. Firstly, we focus on the far plane. These are images displaying Osaka Castle without occlusion, occlusion mask, and with occlusion. Our system provides the opaque virtual content on the far plane. These are images focusing on the three depths. Our system can provide their consistent occlusion. Secondly, we focus on the middle plane. These are images displaying a teapot. Our system also provides their opaque virtual content on the middle plane. These are images focusing on the three depths. Finally, we focus on the near plane. These are images displaying a screw. Our system also provides the opaque virtual content on the near plane. These are images focusing on the three depths. From the evaluation, our occlusion technique makes the virtual content opaque, leading to more realistic AR. This is a result movie, changing the, the AR image plane and the focal depths. Our method has some limitations. Our hardware is bulky for a wearable device. Our optical system optically shifts the viewpoint of, a, of the user forward to the exit side of the system. Uh, <coughs> our system has only a sing single occlusion layer, so our system cannot support occlusion on multiple depths at the time. To display the occlusion mask at the right position continuously, our system needs to calibrate several eye and display coordinates in real time. Finally, this concludes my talk. We propose there are bifocal occlusion technique for an OST HMD. Sliding an LCD optically changes the depth of the occlusion mask. Our system displays the sharp occlusion at the given planes. That's it. Thanks for listening. Oh, this is really excellent work. I'm Gordon Wettstein from Stanford. Do you have any thoughts on how to miniaturize the optical complexity of, of the very focal type occlusion version or, or even fixed focus? Because that seems to be one of the biggest challenges to actually get any kind of uh, sharp edge occlusion, very focal or not, into a thin form factor. Uh, so, so using Flannel lenses uh, is helpful for decreasing uh, the hardware size. Uh, but so using Flannel lens uh, so might degrade uh, the visual of the uh, real world uh, because of uh, the structure of Flannel lens. Got it. OK. So it remains a big challenge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 